Hello fellow problem solvers, so there I'm doing a problem from the Asian Pacific Math Olympiad 2004 problem number one. As you see, try this nice problem out for an, a minimum of 10 minutes, ideally 30 to 45, not more than 90 minutes. If you're beginning to learn about combinatorics and number theory, this is a good medium difficulty problem for you to sort of level up to the next level. Now, without further ado, if you want to actually go along with us, just read the problem, put your first couple of ideas out on paper for the next five minutes, try it out. And now let's begin. So it says find all finite non-empty sets S of positive integers such that I plus J over D GCD of I and J is an element of S for every I and J that are in S. And here, I actually didn't say this, but I and J don't have to be different, right? They can be the same. And now we're the GCDs are common the, the not divisor. So what is maybe the first thing you notice in this problem? Well, for me, it's that I can pick I is equal to J. And then I have, I know the GCD of I and I, I have I plus I, or the GCD of I and I is going to be I. I know that's two, this is two I over I, so I know that two is an element of S, just like that. And now let's look at this GCD. So I know two is definitely in it. So I know if I have a two and an I, I have that I plus two over the GCD of I and two, is also an element of S. And my question for you is, when will this give me an infinite number of elements in S? I invite you to pause for five minutes and ask yourself, in which case will this happen? For which I? And the answer is, if I have an odd I, then this GCD is one, and then from I, I get I plus two. I plus two and I have the same parity, so then I can get I plus four, just by having I plus two and two over like that, over the GCD of them, which is one, is then an element of S, so I have I plus four is an element of S. In other words, I will keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger elements. Now, some of you may be wondering, okay, how do I write this down? And you can say, assume that there exists a finite S, which has an odd integer. And let's take, because it's finite, we can take the biggest of those odd integers and let that be 2k plus one. That's an element in S. And then you say, okay, this tells me if 2k plus one is an S, then I, if I take 2k plus one and two, then I have 2k plus one plus two over one is an element in S, though this is 2k plus three, which is a contradiction that 2k plus one was the biggest one. That's the way, that's a totally legit way to write this down. And it's quick and simple. And now with this, so if we have an odd element, then as, as grows without bound. Now, what other elements can't we have? So if we had a four, say here, if I was four, we would have four plus two, over two would be equal to three. Similarly, if we had eight, we'd have eight plus two over two is equal to five. And we can't have any four, if you have any four K inside here, then we'd have four K plus two over two is two K plus one, an element of S. And here's where I invite you to pause for another 10 minutes and try to push the problem further. And here's the next step, the next idea. I hope you paused. And the next idea is, okay, so if I have a number of the form 4k plus 2 uh, of, of the form 4k, I'm done. What happens if I have a 6? If I have a 6, I'm not immediately done, but if I have a 6, I'll have 6 plus 2 over 2, which will give me a 4, and then I'm done. And similarly, if I have a, if I have a 10, I'll have a 10 plus 2 over two, which will give me a six, which will then give me a four. So now we hypothesize, wait, can I get any even integer other than two in S? Can I? 
And the answer is, well, it doesn't seem like I can. It seems like if I have an even integer other than 2 in S, I'll get to an odd number or I'll get to an even which will get me to an to the next even which will get me to an odd and so on and so forth. So how do we actually prove this is the case? Well notice that what we're doing here is saying like I know 10 can't be inside because I saw if I have a 10 and a 2 over 2 will give me a 6 because and I know that 6 cannot be inside S. When I looked at 12 I was like yeah 12 plus 2 gives me a 7 I'm done. But say I looked at 14, I knew 14 plus 2 gives me an 8. I've seen 8 before, I I'm not done with 8, I can't have an 8, so I'm done, I cannot have 14. Similarly with 18, with 18 plus 2 it gives me 10, right? Like, or 2 gives me 10, and I know I can't have 10, I've already checked that, because 10 will give me a 6, 6 will give me a 4, 4 will give me a 3, and then hell will break loose. So, this tells you that... It's probably not possible to have any other even number other than 2. Now, how do we prove this? Well, let's assume S has an even number other than 2 in it. And because S is finite, what's the thing when we have a number here? We'll have, if we have 2k plus 2 over 2, we have 2k and 2, we will get 2k plus 1, that's in S. And now what is true about k plus 1 as opposed to 2k? It's smaller. So now a way to finish this off is to say, okay, let's say that we have some even number in S. We showed we can't have an odd number in S. And of all the even numbers, other than two, let's pick the smallest one. So it's the second smallest number in S. We know it's an even. And then if that number is 2k, then we know 2k plus 2 over 2, the GCD of 2k and 2 is 2 is going to give us k plus 1, which is also an element of s. However, we said k is greater than or equal to 2. And 2k is the smallest one, so it must be the case that k plus 1 is greater than or equal to 2k. But this right here gives us a contradiction, because on the one hand, k is greater than or equal to 2, and on the other hand, k is less than or equal to 1. Both cannot simultaneously hold true because they would imply one greater than or equal to two. And this is not the case. And so we have shown that if S has at least two elements, that it's infinite. Because it has to have a two. And if it has another one, another element, it will get to what's it called? It will either have an odd and then an infinite number of odds, and if it has an even element, then that, if it's only composed of evens, then there's a second smallest even number, but we get that that is not the case. K plus one should then be even here, right? That's sort of the trick. Like this, this actually isn't, like if he picked an odd number, this would not be true. And this is a way to formalize this very quickly. So this finishes up our problem and it goes to show like you try to play around with simple things step by step, step by step, da -da -da, and you're done. And this is what sometimes these problems in pedal mathematics can be about. You know, you play, play with this, with that, with this and that, and boop, done. And as always, thanks for problem solving.